So in this video, we're going to go through some raster sampling techniques in QJS. You may have acquired uh, a raster, such as sea surface temperature, where every pixel has a value. And your analysis might require that you uh, assign a value of that raster to a corresponding point. Um, so let's take a look at some of the options available to us in QJS. <laughs> So with the latest and greatest QGIS installed, we can go through some of the tools that are available to us. In the first example, we'll look at point sampling tool. In the second example, we'll look at zonal statistics. In the third example, we'll look at raster pixels to points. And in the last example, we'll look at the profile tool. In example one, we're going to use the point sampling tool to sample a raster and assign data values to a layer of points. In this example, uh, our points layer is petroleum wells, which have been drilled in the coastal waters of Victoria in Australia. Uh, these wells are for exploration or production. And the objective of this example is to find out the depth to the seabed where each of these wells was drilled or the bathymetry. Um, the source of the bathymetry is going to come from a raster layer we've downloaded from Gebco. And what we're going to do is for each of these points, we want to extract the depth from the raster below it. Straight away, we're going to need the point sampling tool. So go up to your plugins, manage and install plugins and search for point sampling tool and install it. Once it's installed, it's not um, it's not intuitive where they actually put it. Um, click the plugins menu and go down to analyses and there you'll find the point sampling tool. So with the point sampling tool, it asks us a few things. The first thing it's going to ask us is what sampling points we want to assign data to. And in our case, it's the Vic Petroleum Wells. And in the second window, it's uh, where we want to get values from. And you'll notice that it gives us the Vic Petroleum Wells again, and it gives us all the features of that, uh, that original layer. But right down the bottom, we can see our rasters. And the one we're interested in is the Gebco DEM Bathymetry Victoria. So we'll select that. In addition to that, I want to um, I want to extract the name of the um, the well, and I want to extract the site ID. So if you hold Control on your keyboard and click each of those options, what we're going to come out with is a a new layer that's going to give us the site ID, the well name, and the corresponding depth from that Gebco raster. So we'll tell it where we want to save it. And I have already created this. It's going to save as a geo package. You can also save it as a shapefile or a CSV. We're going to skip this, uh, the CSV stage here. We're just going to save it as a geo package and I'll explain later and add the created layer to the map. So run that. And it's now sampled each of those points and we've got a new layer. And if we have a look at the attributes for that layer, we see we've got uh, the name and the site ID and the depth that has come from that Gebco raster. So if we want to actually use this for any sort of analyses outside of QGIS, if you're using OR or if you're using uh, Python or even Excel, um, so that's very easy. Right click on the geo package layer you've created, go down to export and save features as, and we're going to save it as a comma separated value. And this is why I skipped earlier. Um, in that earlier option where we use the point sampling tool, it won't actually extract the latitude and longitude or basically the geo the geo reference um, information for each point. It will just give you the name of the point and the depth. Um, we can do this when we export a layer as a CSV, but we have to go down to layer options, select geometry and select as XY. If we don't select that, we don't get any geometry. Again, we just get uh, site ID, well name, and Gebco depth. So tell it where you want to save it. And I'll just save over this file I've created earlier. And we don't need to add that to the map. Done. So let's take a look at the CSV that we created. And as you can see, we've got uh, longitude, latitude. Um, this is just a field ID 
that's uh, automatically signed. We've got the site ID that came from that Vic Petroleum Wells layer. We've got the well name and we've got the Gebco uh, DEM depth, which is negative values in meters. In example two, we're going to use zonal statistics to uh, sample the raster layer and extract summary statistics for a polygon that um, that will allow us to capture information from that raster layer. And in the example, we're going to zoom into Perth and we're going to look at a polygon layer which shows sports fields. Um, so we've got a couple of them around the metro area. And what we want to get out of this example is we want to extract the um, the mean elevation uh, above sea level for each of these parks. So what we've got to work with in this case is we've got a, um, a digital elevation model, which is five meters, uh, which is five meter pixels. And so we can see that there's a bunch of pixels inside this oval. They look fairly homogenous, as you'd expect for a, um, a sporting field, which would be fairly flat. But Zonal Statistics is a really good, um, it's a really good tool for making and extracting those quick summary statistics. So to find Zonal Statistics, the tool itself, uh, we'll go up to the Processing Toolbox and search for Zonal Statistics, and you can see it comes up. And all it asks for is initially the raster layer, which in our case is the Perth DEM five meter LIDAR. And then it's gonna ask us the vector layer with the containing zones or polygons. And that's um, that's gonna be the Perth sports field. And then it gives you this option to um, output um, each column and statistics to calculate. And if we click this box, we can see all the different options we've got. We can. Um, you can click every single one of these and it will extract all those stats. For this example, I'm only going to look for the mean. So what this will find is the mean elevation above sea level for each of those polygons, which is a sports field. And the out output column prefix is uh, just a customizable one. So we'll call it um, mean um, elevation. and run that and what it does is it appends that information to the, uh, the polygon that you already had so if we look at the attributes and scroll to the end uh, we've got mean elevation and that's the data value and we've got that for each of our locations so that's worked fine and what we want to do is we want to append that to the label so we'll just do a bit of styling and very, very simple. I've already got a label that tells us the name of the oval. So add a new line. And in this one, we're going to go to fields and values, select this uh, mean elevation. Let's see. So as we can see in the example, it gives you a whole lot of um, digits after the decimal. We don't need that. So we just type round open bracket. And this is going to round down that number and we don't want any decimal places. So we can see now it's reading 19. We want to add a some extra text. So meters elevation. And you can see how it's going to come out on the label. So run that. And now we've essentially extracted that elevation data from a raster. That's a five meter LIDAR derived elevation model. And we've um, calculated the mean value. So from this raster, if I zoom in and Essentially, it's the mean value for all of these pixels, which is, uh, as you can see yourself, it's all they're all going to be fairly homogenous. And that is essentially how we use the zonal statistics tool for sampling rasters. In example three, we're going to use raster pixels to points to extract all raster pixel values from a raster layer and create a new points layer with the uh, corresponding values assigned to each point. Um, the example we're going to use is 
to look at sea surface temperature from the Aquamodus satellite program. And we're going to look at change from 2002 to 2019. And specifically, we're going to look at um, an Australian marine park in Geograph Bay in southwe southwest Western Australia. And I've gone ahead and I've clipped the uh, sea surface temperature uh, rasters to the park. So what we want to do is we want to extract every single value for each of these pixels. And if we take a look, for example, this pixel I've just clipped in 2019, it was 22.3. And in 2002, it was 20.305. So again, in or scale is very small. There's only a, a couple of dozen pixels. But if you're doing this on a very large scale, this is a very useful approach. So again, we want to we want to find the raster pixels to points tool. So processing toolbox, raster pixels to points. And the tool will allow you to do one raster at a time, which is fine if you've only got a small uh, number of rasters, but you may have a very long time series. And if you have that, you're really gonna want to use batch process. So batch process, very, very sim simple to set up. It asks you what the raster layer is. So select from open layers, and we're going to look at the clipped layers. Um, we're going to leave field name as value for both. And then we're going to end up with the uh, vector point uh, layer, which is going to be output and going to tell it where to save it. And I've already created these, so I'm going to write over them. And the last thing we're going to click is to load the layers on completion. So run that and our layers are there. So now, like I say, what we've got is we've got a two layers of points for each year and every single point, if we click 2019 on this point, we can see the value is 21.66 degrees Celsius, sea surface temperature at that point. And just be, we could then go ahead and export it as a CSV as we did before, but we're gonna do a little bit of um, analysis within QGIS just to show you what you else you can do without going out to OR or to Excel or to Python. So we're going to use the Plotly um, plugin. So again, open up your plugins and search for data Plotly and install it. Um, but first, we're going to just do one more step in the processing. And I'm going to merge those two vector layers together to create one. And just going to leave it as temporary. And rename that to Aqua Modus. And let's have a quick look at what that is like. So we've got a we've got a field ID. We've got a value, which is uh, the sea surface temperature, and we've got the layer. So each um, pixel is now a point, and we've got two years of points. So open data plotly, and we're going to select the layer we just merged, which is Aquamodus sea surface temperature. And the reason I merged them is that I can now create um, some summary plots uh, just for a preliminary look. And we're going to use box plots to look at the distribution of the data in each year. And because I've merged them, I can now use um, the layer field name as a group. So I'll have two blocks, box plots, uh, one per layer. And the Y field, leave it as value. Uh, we'll go down to the next tab and we're gonna just do some some labeling. X label will be year and December. Y label will be sea surface temperature degrees Celsius. And Let's have a look what happens. So data plotly gives us a nice interactive box plot that we can have a look at. And in 2002 versus 2019, we can see that there's a visually significant difference between the two years. So in summary, that's how we use raster pixels to points to extract every single value of a pixel uh, and create a new point file. And then we did it for two different raster layers and we use data plotly to create box plots to give us uh, a visual interpretation, a much warmer year in 2019 when compared to 2002. 
And finally, in example four, we're going to use the profile tool to look at the profile of a vector layer as it lays over a raster. Um, the example we're going to use again is back to Perth, and we're going to look at Bold Park, which you may remember from an earlier video we did on slope and aspect. Um, we're going to look at a trail through this park called the Zamiya Trail. And what we want to get out of this is an idea of the, um, the elevation of the trail, but also the uh, slope of the trail, just to determine what uh, kind of difficulty this might be before we actually head out there and go for a walk. Um, the data source we're going to use for the profile is, first off, is the 5 meter digital elevation model we used earlier. And secondly, we're going to actually use the slope model that we developed from that earlier um, video just to see how steep or how not steep the, um, the trail actually travels. So to do this very easy, we're going to use the uh, profile tool, manage and install pro uh, plugins and search for the profile tool, install it if you don't have it. Um, where you find it is in plugins, profile tool, terrain profile. So how this works is you have to highlight the, um, the source and the vector layer that you're interested in in your layers window and it does all the work in the profile tool. So first of all, we're going to look at elevation. Um, I'm not actually going to switch it on. I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to add that layer and you can see it's added into the tool. Now we need to tell the tool what vector layer it is that we're actually sampling. So highlight the Zimia trail and go down to selection and selected layers. And here we can see our elevation profile for the park. And if we scroll through the profile and look at the map, you can see where you are in relation to the trail on the map, which is fantastic. A very good data visual visualization, very easy to show to people. And, but of course it's uh, nice to have it in QGIS, but we might want to export it for other reasons in, um, in other programs. And how we do that is to select table. In the first row, uh, we have the distance, um, in the in, on the trail from this beginning, which is zero, all the way through to the end at 10,000 odd meters. So it's a 10 kilometer trail. And in the second row, we actually have the elevation in meters, which is what we're interested in. And we can export it in various ways. We can create a temporary layer. But what we're gonna do for this example is just copy what we've got to the clipboard with the coordinates. And just open Excel, paste that in. I've already made the uh, the headings so we can see our distance or eastings or northings and or elevation very very straightforward very simple but let's have a look at e the slope so remove that first layer reset our view so now we're going to highlight the slope layer add that slope layer highlight the Zimia trail again and it's already opened it up so we can see now the slope in degrees so the y-axis goes from 0 to 16, which is not really that big a deal. But um, again, as you scroll through, you can see where you are in relation to the trail. So maybe let's go to this point up here, which looks like might have the steepest section. And that's really all there is to using the profile tool, except for exporting your graphs, which is pretty self-explanatory. And that's where we will leave it today. So we looked at point sampling tool, we looked at zonal statistics, raster pixel to points, and finally the profile tool in QGIS.